Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this video, we're going to get creative with gradients in Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop, and first of all, I'm going to go to File, down to New, and create a new document that's 1920 by 1080 pixels. Next, select the Paint Bucket tool, and then fill the background with black. Next, select the Ellipse tool, and then click and drag to draw an ellipse. Of course, you can hold shift as well, and this will make sure it stays a perfect circle. Now from the properties panel, I can set the stroke color to none. And then for the fill, I'm going to pick a nice bright color. And don't worry too much about the color at this stage because you can change the color later on. Okay, let's pop it in the center and then press command or control J to duplicate the layer. Go to edit and select free transform. You can then hold shift and alt or option to scale this down slightly. Next, double click the thumbnail for this layer and select black as the background color, just so it matches the background. Then select the colored layer below, right click and select blending options. Then if you go down to the gradient overlay tab, you can click on the gradient slider and choose from one of the many presets, or you can create your own custom gradient. Okay, once you're happy, click OK, and then adjust the angle of the gradient if you like. Then once you're done, click OK. Now let's give these two layers names, just so we don't get them mixed up. We'll go with gradient for one, and then hole for the other one. So now let's right click the gradient layer, and select convert to smart object. Now smart objects are great because you can double click them to go inside of them, make any changes, save and close, and those changes get updated in the main document. They're also cool because we can add smart filters. So let's go and select path blur. And you'll see this window pops up. And now we can click to add a point and we can blur along a certain path. We can extend this out in the direction of the arrow and even add a bend to the path as well. There's plenty of settings you can customize on the right hand side and you'll see your preview update in real time as you make any changes. So let's just play around with these for a moment and you'll see what I mean. There we go, looking good. If you're feeling cheeky, you can also turn on high quality and then click OK. Now with the gradient layer selected, you can use your mouse or the arrow keys to shuffle this around and offset this slightly. Now if I invert the background with Command or Control I, you can see the hole doesn't match the background anymore. One way around this is to hold Command or Control and click on the thumbnail for the whole layer. This will make this a selection and then if I hide this layer, I can select the gradient layer and from the bottom of the layers panel, add a layer mask. And you can see that's the wrong way around. So with the layer mask selected, press Command or Control I and it will invert this. Now I can change the background color to anything I like and we've essentially cut out that space in the middle. Next, let's duplicate the gradient layer and then hide the bottom one. Right click the one on top and select rasterize. Now that that's done, let's go and select the smudge tool. You can find it hiding under this menu here if you can't see it already. You can adjust the size as you would a normal brush and you can adjust the strength of the smudge as well. Now, depending on the strength and what happens with your hands in this next bit will determine how strong or how subtle your smudge effect will be. So it may take a bit of playing around until you find the right tolerance that you're looking for. And so with my own advice in hand, this happened. What on earth is that? I, what, what are you doing? Stop, stop it. I don't know what's happening. I can only apologize. As you can see, this was a complete fail. So if this does happen to you, just delete that layer, duplicate it again, and then try once more. Okay, swiftly moving on, let's go to image adjustments and select hue and saturation. From here, we can adjust the hue and other properties for the color of the gradient. And this is a quick and easy way to play around with some different color combinations as well. You can also check colorize and adjust the hue if you'd like a single color instead of the gradient. Now, if I click and drag, you can see this single layer moves around like so. However, if I'd like to separate the hole from the gradient, I can click the link in between the layer and the mask and then move this independently. 
Just remember to relink the layer in the mask again if you would like to move it around as before. Okay, let's use free transform again and scale this up holding shift and alt or option just to make it a bit bigger. And then next select the type tool. Click anywhere and type some text. I'm going to go with P and S, short for Photoshop. And then I'm going to scale it up and then select the text and adjust the character properties. Things like font, font weight, the tracking, all that good stuff. And lastly, of course, let's pop it in the center and close down these panels. And there we go. We've arrived at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.